Hello and welcome to all the UPSC aspirants in the concept series of the Abhimanyu IS where I bring every week a number of topics which are highly relevant for the UPSC prelims as well as for the mains exam. So today I have come on a topic which is Administrative Reforms Commission which is very important for the GS2 and GS4 ethics paper of the UPSC mains exam. So let's see what are these and before I begin those students who wants to join Indian polity module of my class of the classroom teaching online and in the offline so they may see this chart every information is available and those students who wants to join the file so we are giving three days free trial for the Indian polity module. Let's see what is the first admin reform commission and then we will be looking at the second admin reform commission. The first admin reform commission came in the very year 1966 and it was chaired by Shri Morarji Desai who recommended a number of things. First establish interstate council under article 263 to promote conciliation and better harmony and coordination and cooperation between center and the states and to ensure that center and states works in harmony and do not get their relations spoiled. So the interstate council was recommended by admin reform commission but finally it was established on the basis of Sarkaria commission in the year 1990. Then appoint administration and public life experienced person as a governor with non partisan attitude and I would like to share one information that governor is highly criticized as a mediator or, or as an agent among the center and the state relations and because of his number of following actions which are discretionary powers, his vetoes powers, his financial powers, his admin powers. So number of powers is used discretionary by the governor which spoils the relation not only of the council of minister in the state with the governor but also with the central government. So that is why the admin reform commission or the first admin reform commission recommended that we need to have such a person as a governor who is having known partisan attitude and works in the interest of the people. Then more devolution to powers to states including the financial powers in the form of grants in aids, number of like discretionary grants, statutory grants, specified scheme grants, grants for the Panchayati Raj and the municipalities. So number of financial aspects needs to be catered to and central forces deployment in the state on their request. What actually happens that under article 355 it is a duty of the central government to protect the state not to, to, to protect the state from any sort of insurgency, extremism, public order and other problems of any sort of actions and ensure that constitutional provisions works into the state. So if any time all these conditions are not met and considered by the central government. So central government becomes competent as per the constitution to deploy the central armed police forces which are in numbers like ITBP, CISF, BSF, CRPF to ensure law and order and to ensure that constitution works in its full spirit which is highly criticized by the state governments. The reason being the central armed police forces are deployed in the states without the consent of the state government and this is the first admin reform commission highly recommended that you should take state government's voice into the consultation. Then what is the second admin reform commission and even I would say that more important this second admin reform commission if you are preparing for the civil service. So, it was shared by Shri Virappa Moeli and in the year 2005 it was constituted. Its mandate was to ensure proactive, responsive, accountable, sustainable, efficient administration at all the levels of the government machineries. Proactive means fast decision taking, responsive, responsible behavior, accountable is to question, sustainable is a long is a long running and efficient administration is expeditious and fast administration without having any sort of mismanagement and maladministration. It considers following aspects. First, organizational structure of the government of India from top to the bottom. Then ethics in governance in every level. Ethical values should be imbibed. This was the spirit. Refurbishing of public administration. Again, revival and rewinding of the public administration at all the levels. Then strengthening of financial administration. Financial administration in the sense should there should be a proper mechanism to deliver the financial funds and the financial grants on the time to the government machineries at the grassroots level. Efficient district administration whether we have the SDM, DMs and other all kind of hierarchical officers in the states and in the union level. So district administration should be done with a very proper guidance and local self government which includes P Panchayati Raj institution and municipality. Local self government should be boosted enough, should be given more teeth to work properly and to ensure the decentralization. Then social capital, participatory public services, 
citizen centric administration e governance and public order in the last so these were the number of aspects on which the second admin reform commission really stressed and it is highly important to understand that second admin reform commission is considered as the bulwark reform commission of the government of india and we have in total 15 reports on these number of items which are highly relevant not just for the civil service aspirants but for any other individual who really wants to study about the administration aspects so this much was enough in this concept series of admin reform commission thank you so much we'll meet on the next day with the next topic thank you